What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we're back for the last review of the night. This is Marriage to Medicine. This is season three, um, season eight, the reunion part three. So you guys, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on the channel and not already subscribed to the channel and hit that subscribe button, you guys, like stop taking me out on a date and not paying for it at the end of the date. It's very rude, you guys. So without further ado, let's get into this review. Now, this review actually might not be that long because part three of the reunion really wasn't much. Like, I don't understand why we needed three parts to the reunion. The season really didn't give a lot to have a three-part reunion. I don't know if they were just stretching it for, you know, um, actually, that's probably what it was. They were probably just stretching it for some air, you know, for shows to have on the air because I don't actually know what's coming on next week in their place. I don't know if they're going to move, watch what happens. I don't, actually, I don't know what's going to happen next week. But let's talk about the review, the reunion, shall we? All right, you guys. So I, I'm still confused, like, how the guys thought that what Scott said about the life coach made any lick of sense. So he, like I said, he explained that situation last week to us, right? And like I said last week, it made absolutely no sense to me. So then I think it was like Cecil and Curtis who kept saying, Oh, no, 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 no. There's more to it, especially um, Curtis. There's more to it. So what they're trying to say is that when Contessa had her life coach, that Scott was reacting to them in order for it to make it look like he does care about the marriage. But why lie about it? And we're going to talk about it a little bit more, right? But I'm glad that I'm not the only person that found this confusing because Karen said this shit is confusing as hell, right? So then backstage, Contessa is talking to Heavenly and to Quad while she's getting her makeup touched up, right? And, you know, she's, at, you know, they're talking to her. And Contessa said, you know, with me and Scott, I told him that if nothing changes, that we're not going to be in the same situation a, you know, a year from now. And I like, did you give it a date? She's like, yeah, by my birthday next year, we won't be in the same situation. So Scott says that, you know, um... You know, that when it comes to him and Contessa, they are still in the house together. He thought that when Quad was saying that she filed for a separation, that he was that she was saying it was a done deal. I'm like, how did you get that? All she said, all she said was that you guys are separated. I don't know how he got that. It was a done deal. So he, you know, Andy asked the question. So are you monogamous? He says, oh, yeah, we're both monogamous, like no polyamorous stuff over here with us. Right. So then we also found out that two months ago, they put the house up for sale, right? And I was like, huh? Like, when it comes to Scott and Contessa, it's just really confusing. Like, Scott says one thing, Contessa says another, then Scott comes back with something else that's like, and it's kind of like both what they both say contradicts what they said before. So Cecil says, you know, his situation him and Simone, when they when they were going through their, their marital issues, it was a gut punch for everyone in the cast, but it wasn't a surprise for him. But with Contessa and Scott, it wasn't a gut it wasn't a gut punch for the ladies, but for Scott, it was a bit of a gut punch, right? Which I'm like, okay, I get where you're coming from, right? So then we have everyone out on the stage at this at the in the next segment, and we talk about COVID. So, you know, Andy's asking Kieran, with your practice, you were shut down because of COVID and, you know, you're a plastic surgeon. And so yours is elective. Like, how did that affect you? He says, it affected me a lot when, you know, having kids, building a new house. Like, it was stressful not knowing how he would make it. But, you know, eventually everything opened up, right? So then Eugene talks about, you know, how it feels to hear the other doctors saying that they, you know, they went through COVID. He says, hearing that... It feels like to him, hearing people say all lives matter because we know that ER doctors, we know that, you know, people in the um, ICU, they were hit the hardest with this. And then Eugene broke down because he was talking about this this time that he had to, you know, put a ventilator in a, in a patient's mouth. And he had to hop on top of her and his PPE was falling off. And he was, you know, he had to distance himself from his family because he didn't know if he was, you know, he had contracted COVID. So Andy said, did you ever contract COVID? He says, thankfully, I didn't. And he said, but he says that the lady that he put the ventilator in, she died the next day. God. 
So then they talk about the march, you know, marching on Washington and just how much it meant to all of them. Um, we're going to move on, you guys. I honestly don't think this is going to be a long review at all because it, it just didn't give me much. It really did not. I hate to say that, but I think we could have wrapped the reunion up last week, honestly, because this part of the reunion, we just didn't really talk about a whole lot of stuff. So a viewer asked a question of Eugene, is Toya still sending him naked pictures? He says no, that that was early on in their relationship, but it was kind of jarring for her to send him naked pictures while he's working. And, you know, um, Andy, uh, someone asked a question of Kieran, how did he feel when Anila was talking to Quad and talking about the fact that, you know, Indian men have big dicks? He says he just rolled his eyes and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of like my mother. He says, oh, please don't say that. <laughs> Kieran does not see it for her um, mother, right? So then Andy then talks about this tweet that Eugene made in response to what Quad said about Toya. You know, how she, I, you know, I know how she got her house. She begged, borrowed, and stole to get it. And he says, well, we didn't beg to get it. Number one, borrowed. Hmm. Well, that's what happens when you go to a bank and get a loan. Steal, if you have any proof of me stealing, call the cops. And I guess Quad felt some type of way about that, him saying that. Talking about, you know, I told you, you know, if you want to be in women's business, I can go buy your skirt. He said, just make sure it's pretty. Now, I have an issue with Quad with that one talking about, you know, if you want to be in women's business, you know, I'll buy you a skirt. Technically, that wasn't women's business. Now, granted, what Toya said on that live about you, she was talking to Simone and Cecil. But when you, she was talking about you, just talking about you and how, you know, talking about, she said, she said that that apartment was bullshit. You being that bullshit as a pop, her words is like, you being that bullshit apartment talking that bullshit with Heavenly. What was wrong with that? Like, I don't get what was so bad about that. And then like Toya said, you guys even talked about it. The thing that, well, the thing that got me was the fact that she's sitting here saying it's women's business. It would be women's business if you were just talking about Toya. Like if you send if you said, oh, I know how Toya got, you know, the dress that she wore to the reunion, she begged, borrowed, and stole to get that dress for the reunion. That would be between you and Toya. But you're talking about their home, their 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 home, where he, I'm pretty sure his name is on the, on the um, you know, his name is on everything, as well as Toya's. So you're not just, th you're not just taking a dig at Toya. You're taking a dig at both Toya and Eugene. So Eugene had every right to say what he said. So I don't know. I didn't agree with her, but she said, I said what I said. I mean, you said what you said and asked, you know, but what you said was some bullshit. But I just didn't agree with her saying that he'll, she'll get him a skirt or a dress. Like, how was it particularly women's business when you're talking about his family and his family's home that they had to beg, borrow and steal? And like he said, borrow. Yes, we got a loan from a bank. That's what you do when you get a house. Not since most times this is what you do when you get a house. You borrow the money from a bank to build your house. Unless, I mean, unless you got the money outright to just pay for it, then yes. So I didn't agree with that. Really didn't. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Oh, we almost done with the notes. Let's move on. All right, you guys, let's talk about Scott. So a viewer asked Scott a question about him and contestants being in counseling, telling him basically that they need to get back in counseling. Scott was very nonchalant in that scene. I was like, dude, this is the issue. Like, that is the issue with Scott. You are so nonchalant about this counseling thing. You do, I mean, did you not watch the entire season? You don't, do you not see that there are issues in your marriage? Your wife filed for a separation. You guys put your house on the market. There are visible cracks in the relationship. Why are you not trying to fix it? Like, that's my issue with Scott. You see there is an issue. If you say you, he says he loves Contessa. He says he wants to be with Contessa, but you're not acting like someone who does. Because if you love Contessa, if you wanted to be in this relationship with Contessa, you would find a way to make it work. And Contessa keeps telling you the way to make it work is to go to counseling. Counseling is not a bad thing. I think that is a stigma in the black community that we don't go to counselors. We don't seek counseling. Oh, just go to your pastor. Have them pray over, have them pray over you. That doesn't work. That does not work. I hate to tell it to you guys. That doesn't work. You need to have someone that can be objective. 
someone that doesn't know you or you that can be like, okay, tell me how you feel, then tell me how you feel, and they can give you tips, they can give you tools to help you repair and strengthen your marriage, right? So then Andy asked Simone and Jackie, what were their intentions with bringing the men and and um and um Scott to Jekyll Island? Both Jackie and um, Simone's whole thing was bringing him to Jekyll Island, especially Simone. She says, you know, when we were at this re at the at that reunion, and everyone talked to us, that was really what helped us with you know helped me and Cecil in our marriage, right? So then Andy asked the women, you know, you ladies heard what we were talking about in the last segment. What did you guys think about it? Both Quad and Heavily both said that they thought he was lying, which I'm gonna agree with them. I think Scott was lying through his damn teeth. Now, this shit with Scott and Contessa is hella confusing. Once again, Kieran called it out because there are so many things like, I don't even need my notes for that part. So, Scott, you guys remember, in the one episode, Scott was telling Contessa that he had a, a, a life coach that was a woman that he wasn't paying. But then remember in Jekyll Island that he said that it was a man. There have been so many lies told by Scott, like, I don't know what's what. And then now, at, now at the reunion, the latest lie is, oh, he said that in retaliation to Contessa. But then it was also because he didn't want to look like he didn't care about the marriage. But Scott, at this this whole reunion, you look like you don't care about the marriage. You look like you are completely removed from it, basically. So, um, where are we at? So then we talked about the photo that Scott showed to. Eugene and to uh, um, Cecil about the woman giving him the facial. When they said facial, I thought my mind went to the gut. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. My mind literally did not think about an actual facial. <laughs> my mind went to the gutter when they said facial. Heavenly said that, you know, she texted Scott and told him to take that shit down because that picture was inappropriate. I didn't know Scott had posted that picture on social media. Like, why would you post that? Now, granted, I get it. If the person is doing work for you and promoting, you're promoting them, that's one thing. But you could, you could have just put the, you could have just did a picture with you with this face, with the facial. She could have been cropped out of the picture, and you could have tagged her business. It's a lot of shit with Scott. But let's move on, right? All right, you guys, and then to wrap it up, it really, like I said, it wasn't much. Toya and um, Quan got into it at the end of the reunion about. The whole big borrow still shit. I'm gonna get that out the way already. I don't want to talk about it. So Andy asked the ladies, "Who is the shadiest in the bunch?" They all say heavily. They also also asked, "Who is the habitual line crosser?" He asked that to Jackie. Jackie looked right over to Heavenly. We all know Heavenly crosses the line habitually, right? So then someone asked Heavenly about, you know, what does she think about Quad's house after the comments that she made with Dineva that you know she ain't got no man, she ain't got no kids, she ain't got nobody that loves her. It is what it is. Heavenly tried to say she didn't do it. And Toya was like, girl, I know you lying. I was thinking the same thing. I know you lying. So then somebody asked the question, Anila, do you think it's easy to be a dentist? She still doubled back on it. She says, yes. Like, if I wanted to be a dentist, I could. Heavenly says, no, nah, you can do what I do, baby. Have, you know, you can do the things that I do. And she said, but it was just fun, Shay. You know, it was me retaliating against you. And honestly, guys, that's the end of the reunion. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Um, that's it. Um, like the video, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else and share the video. Until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask or not, whichever one you guys do decide to do. Just be safe, be blessed, and social distance. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye, guys.